Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News, broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. It has been cleared for publication that the Israel Security Agency has in recent weeks uncovered an extensive Hamas network in the West Bank city of Hebron, which included several women who operated in secret at the directive of Hamas command centers in both Turkey and the Gaza Strip. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani declared that the Islamic Republic will overcome newly reimposed U.S. measures against the Tehran. Sanctions, Rouhani claims, will only serve to unify the nation. The United States referred to a signing of an agreement for military cooperation between the Islamic Republic and the Assad regime as a primary example of Iran's continued destabilizing activities around the globe. It has been cleared for publication that the Israel Security Agency, ISA, with the assistance of the IDF and the Israel police, has in recent weeks uncovered an extensive Hamas network in the West Bank city of Hebron, which included several women who operated in secret at the directive of Hamas command centers in both Turkey and the Gaza Strip. According to the ISA, the network was used, among other things, to deliver messages and instructions transfer funds to finance terrorist operations, and coordinate operations with the organization's command centers. The ISA investigation has revealed that the network prompted Hamas activity in Hebron, including the recruitment of operatives, coordinating activity at mosques, preaching and increasing support, distributing online information and incitement, and assisting the families of prisoners. The network also tried to take control of municipal activities in Hebron and manage the activities of charitable institutions in the city. An ISA statement said that exposure of the network proves once again that Hamas command centers abroad and in the Gaza Strip are utilizing all means at their disposal, including the use of women to direct Hamas operations in Judea and Samaria. Now, with regard to the latest developments in Israel's northern neighbor, Syria, the United States referred to the signing of an agreement for military cooperation between the Islamic Republic and the Assad regime as a primary example of Iran's continued destabilizing activities around the globe. After the signing of the agreement, Iran's defense minister Amir Hatami announced that the axis of resistance, referring to Iran, the Assad regime, and Shiite militias backed by the Islamic Republic, is prepared and ready to always respond to any attack against Syria. In response to this threat, a senior Israeli official was quoted by the Ynet news agency as saying, the IDF will continue operating with complete determination against Iran's attempts to entrench in Syria. The official further underscored that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has put the fight against Iran's entrenchment in Syria as a main goal, as he had put the cancellation of the Iran nuclear deal. Now to Tehran, where Iranian President Hassan Rouhani declared that the Islamic Republic will overcome newly reimposed U.S. measures against Tehran, sanctions that will only serve to unify the nation. In a speech broadcasted live on state television, Rouhani said his government would overcome the economic challenges and show the anti-Iranians in the White House that the sanctions would fail. امروز در کاخ سفید جمع شدن به خان علیه ما توطعه کنند کاخ سفید فکر نکنه از پایان جلسه امروز خوشحال خواهد بود The Iranian parliament summoned President Rouhani for the first time to answer a series of questions on the country's weak economic growth and rising unemployment Nevertheless, when asked about his handling of the economy amid rising prices and unemployment, the Iranian president urged lawmakers to get rid of any doubt about the Islamic Republic's future. In related news, the Islamic Republic urged the International Court of Justice to order the immediate lifting of crippling sanctions imposed on Iran by the United States, that after Washington's pullout of a 2015 nuclear agreement that sought to limit Tehran's nuclear program in exchange for international sanctions relief. Mohsen Mohabi, head of the International Legal Affairs Center of Iran's presidential office, told judges at the Peace Palace in The Hague that the sanctions are unjust and harmful. He echoed statements made by the Iranian president Hassan Rouhani, who claimed that the U.S. sanctions were the cause of the declining Iranian economy, effectively driving millions of people into poverty. 
the measures reinstated by the United States, which will be further implemented and aggravated in the coming weeks and months, will have far-reaching consequences. They not only jeopardize Iran capacity to recover a fully functional economy, Mr. President, they will be an impediment to its ability to guarantee basic health and safety for its people, not to mention basic social and educational services. I should add to its people the foreigner living in Iran, even maybe at risk in terms of their safety and health. According to Iran, the United States violated a 1955 friendship treaty between the two countries, the Treaty of Amity, Economic Relations and Consular Rights, and requested the court to indicate provisional measures. The Iranian representative, however, refrained from pointing to the fact that the treaty was signed before the 1979 revolution of the Islamic Republic, which led to a long list of hostilities directed by Iran's revolutionary regime against the United States. Meanwhile, U.S. lawyers urged the International Criminal Court to dismiss the Iranian lawsuit, saying Tehran's real aim was to restore the flawed Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, which is the technical term for the nuclear agreement with Iran. This case is entirely about an attempt to compel the United States, by order of this court, to resume implementation of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or JCPOA. This is clear from the fact that Iran seeks to reinstate sanctions relief that the JCPOA provided, and to do so in circumstances that the JCPOA, by design, did not authorize, namely an application to this court. Iran is endeavoring to use the procedures of the Treaty of Amity to enforce rights that it claims under an entirely different instrument that specifically excludes judicial remedies. The State Department legal advisor further ridiculed Iran's attempt to characterize itself as a victim while lambasting the Islamic Republic's attempt to attribute responsibility for the economic failures of the United States. Iran sought to characterize itself as a victim as a law-abiding state brought to its knees by unlawful U.S. sanctions. The suggestion that Iran is a victim does not withstand scrutiny at any level. It also bears emphasis that the economic and social concerns that Iran's representatives raised yesterday, which Iran seeks to lay at the doorstep of the United States, find deep roots in the Iranian government's mismanagement of its own economy and repression of its own population. The Iranian government cannot succeed in shielding itself from responsibility for the consequences of its own threats to international peace and stability, as well as to its own people, by submission to this court. While the Islamic Republic desperately seeks to preserve its multinational nuclear agreement, the Ayatollah regime is facing a first blow since the American pullout. Paris, which has been one of the strongest advocates of salvaging a 2015 nuclear deal between Iran and world powers, has instructed its diplomats and foreign ministry officials to postpone indefinitely all non-essential travel to Iran, citing a fault bomb plot and a hardening of Tehran's attitude towards France. In an internal memo with directives to Paris's diplomatic corps, the French government cited a foil plot to bomb a rally held by an exiled Iranian opposition group near the French capital that was attended by Trump's lawyer Rudy Giuliani. The plot to bomb a rally on France soil was viewed in Paris as a sign of Tehran's more aggressive stance towards France. The French foreign ministry declined to comment on the memo or say whether the embassy staff had been asked to repatriate their families. Iranian officials at the embassy in Paris did not respond to a request for comment. Thank you for joining us. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Yair Pinto. Have a good evening, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.